Wow, so, I just got done watching this special program. It goes without saying, this is a massive update. We're getting an entire new world, essentially. Obviously, of course, Fontaine. Three new characters, lots of interesting mechanics to dive into. New weapons, new artifacts, new bosses. There's also something besides all of that that I am incredibly excited for. And we'll dive into all that after a quick message from today's video sponsor, Opera GX. Are you tired of your boring ass browser? Well, enter Opera GX. Here we are in their GX store. With just a couple clicks, you can transform your entire browser using one of these mods. And today we're taking a look at the anime mod. From there, you can do lots of things. Let's go up here to the easy setup button. Here we can choose a custom wallpaper. I got this animated Hu Tao one here. Click on get more wallpapers. And then they have an animated tab over here. You can just browse and look through and pick one that suits your fancy. It's super easy. There's also some special effects with the anime mod, like when you hover over something or type in the search bar. You can even turn on background music. There's also a really neat feature built in where you can pop out the video, resize it, so you can keep an eye on your favorite series while pretending to be productive. The sidebar here is really helpful as well. You can quickly and easily jump to many of the apps you like. I find it really cool. Only what is necessary is brought up and not the full screen app. Although of course you can resize it if you want to. And don't worry about all your bookmarks or saved logins. They also have an amazing painless import tool to get all your info from your old boring browser over to Opera GX. Settings, synchronization, and choose what you want to import. Make sure to give Opera GX a try. There are tons of other features we couldn't get to, but it's free and easy. You have nothing to lose. Link will be in the description as well as the pinned comment below. And now back to the video. So there was a bit of a pre-stream trailer here featuring the three new characters, Liney, Lynette, and Friminet. Sorry if I completely butchered those names. There is a big emphasis on magicianship in general when it comes to Fontaine and these new characters especially. But yeah, this version program was understandably over twice as long as their typical special programs. So I'm gonna try and condense it down to what I feel like are the important, interesting things, starting with just Fontaine as a whole and its mechanics. So they do mention that it's going to be approximately 50-50 underwater content and above ground content. It does look like you move relatively slowly through the water, but a couple of good things is that there's no underwater oxygen meter, so you don't need to go back up to the surface for air and there's not a traditional stamina meter either you can quote unquote sprint but that'll use up a different special aqua meter for all intents and purposes it is essentially a stamina meter but you don't have a timer where you have to come back up to the surface and that was a very good idea even if it's less realistic as far as underwater combat is concerned, they mentioned there was no way to just bring the land combat into the water, which of course makes sense. Like just doing Bennett Burst, for example, how would that work underwater? But yeah, underwater combat's apparently gonna be pretty simple. You can get abilities from certain things. Like they show one example of getting a shield, which can deflect or parry attacks. So it's gonna be unique in a way, but obviously very different from land combat. To actually get to Fontaine, you don't need to get very far in the game. You just need to complete act three of the prologue, Song of the Dragon and Freedom. This is all within Mondstadt still, so it's incredibly early on in the game. Essentially, anyone who's not just started out will get a teleport waypoint directly to Fontaine. Whether you need to complete Archon Quest to get access to like a new weekly boss or other areas, I don't know yet. I would assume so. That's usually how they do things, but getting to Fontaine itself is easy. There will, of course, be a new Archon Quest Chapter 4, so if you want to play that, you obviously do have to get caught up. And apparently, all the way until version 4.2, there will be new Archon Quests every update. But yeah, let's talk about the new characters coming. First of all, Liney will have a new story quest for him. He's a pyro bow wielder. He has a special ability with his charged attack where he'll summon a little creature called a Grim Malkin Hat. This taunts enemies and when it eventually expires or explodes, it'll fire off a pyrotechnic strike at a nearby opponent. His burst is transformative. He will transform into this weird hat creature. He can move around quickly and send flames falling down. His exploration passive marks exclusive Fontaine materials on the map. I'm so glad they're starting with a character that does this. It's pretty annoying to, you know, run around trying to collect new materials without a character like this. Liney is the five star of this patch, so he'll be a little harder to obtain, but it's still nice. As you can probably tell, they're pretty light on the details here. They didn't even talk about what his skill does and the burst was pretty vague, but we at least have a bit of an idea. He seems to be at least a pyro bow wielding burst DPS, but without no 
knowing more, it's hard to say exactly. Then we have Lainey's sister, Lynette, also a magician, but more of an assistant to her brother. She's an observant introvert that purposefully lives in her brother's shadow. She's an animo sword wielding four star. She has a cool little ability here like Yolan's where she can speed up and she'll unleash an enigma thrust at the opponent that she marks while in this state. So again, pretty similar to Yolan. I just really like characters that can move faster, I guess. Her burst is actually similar to her brother's charged attack passive thing. She'll summon one of these cats in a hat, which will taunt opponents. This burst is more reminiscent of like Sucrose's burst, since she is animo. It'll absorb one of those four main elements, hydro, pyro, cryo, or electro, and then start pulsing with that element. It also fire vivid shots that will deal damage from that element periodically. And finally, we have Freminet. His main personality is also being very introverted and being a good diver, which I assume is probably important in Fontaine. Also a brother to Liney and Lynette, so it's just kind of a whole big family. He's also a bit of a hobbyist engineer tinkering with mechanisms and such and occasionally breaks them on accident. But yeah, Fremenet here is a cryo greatsword wielding four star. His elemental skill enters him into a Purs timer state. So it's a bit of a transformative skill similar to Hu Tao and Yoimiya that transforms their basic attacks. In his case, his normal attack will increase something called Purse pressure level and also unleash waves of frost that deal cryo damage. At the same time, his elemental skill itself will transform into something else. And when you press his elemental skill again, depending on the level of this Purse pressure, it'll do high higher and higher level attacks. It sounds a little complicated, but basically you use his skill to enhance his basics and then doing basics enhances the next cast of his skill. His burst pretty much plays into this whole thing as well, where it just enhances his skill further. Again, they are very light on the details, which is somewhat unfortunate, especially for a character like this, because it sounds really interesting. He does have a nice exploration passive though. Essentially you can sprint underwater longer. The aquatic stamina consumption is decreased by 35% when he's in your party. So you can swim faster longer. But yeah, those are the new characters coming. It's hard to say if I'm excited for either of them to be honest because they were so light on the details. Obviously I will be getting and trying them all and making little showcases for all of them. Liney, the pyro bow user is a five star so I'm gonna guess he'll be the most exciting quote unquote but we'll see. As for banners we'll have Liney and Yolan together alongside Lynette as the four star for phase one. I think my Yolan is perfectly fine at C1 so I'm not gonna be too sad about missing her but I know a lot of people that don't have Yolan yet probably do want her so it's gonna be pretty tough. Second phase we'll have Zhongli and Child with the new four Four star Fremenet, which is a little bit annoying because I, of course, want Fremenet, but uh, I don't think my Zhongli needs constellations. And I don't personally care about Child that much, but for anyone that doesn't have Zhongli, get Zhongli. Zhongli is so amazing. So I'm not sure right now if I'm going to try and get Fremenet up to C6 or anything, but uh, when I do summon, it'll probably be on the Zhongli banner. As usual, a new five star bow to go alongside the new five star character. This will, of course, be Liney's signature weapon, aptly named the first great magic. Again, zero details on what this bow does. In the next section, they talk a lot about the landscape, you know, world building mechanics. There are these really cool dancing robots, I guess, called Mecha. You do fight it. It looks like some sort of boss. Very interesting and unique looking like combat experience there. There's a massive waterfall in Fontaine and they were describing some technical challenges about how to make this work with the rest of Tavat really to make everything sort of on the same field. The underwater sections are very colorful and vibrant and smooth rounded surfaces. So it's just pleasant to explore and look at really. We will have another new boss called the Emperor of Fire and Iron. Again, whether this is a like materials boss or a weekly boss, I don't know yet. I'm assuming this dude is material boss because we have a new five star pyro character and he'll probably need those mats, but who knows? Moving on to events now, their main one is called Mega Mecha Melee. As usual for their main events, it'll basically consist of several smaller events. This first one is essentially underwater parkour. I think this will be nice just to get a feeling for the mechanics of swimming and all that. So looks fine. Next sub event is basically just combat, which again, I think is good just to like get a feel for, you know, the different sorts of enemies going on. Gives you a chance to fight them while of course completing, you know, event objectives and getting rewards. So it's nice. Next section looks fun, but I am an absolute sucker for rhythm games. I don't think I need to describe this event. You can see what's happening. You just gotta bash these things on the right and left in time with whatever song is playing. I just described it anyway, but what, what else am I supposed to say? <laughs> Looks fun though. Next event is called Relic Records. Again, this feels very much like an introduction to Fontaine event. You're going around collecting specific materials or defeating specific 
specific enemies. It's just a good thing to kind of get familiar with Fontaine and the world, and I think it's a good starting event, honestly. Next event is Studies in Light and Shadow. It's basically a picture-taking event. We've had these before. Again, a very fitting event for the introduction to a new area, really. And finally, for events in version 4.0, we have Verdict of Blades. There are buff mechanics, there are difficulty selectors, very standard stuff for a combat event, but I'm not complaining. Once you reach Adventuring 25, you just get a free Lynette from the event page, so that's really nice, just an extra constellation there. Besides Liney's signature five-star weapon, we'll be getting a ton of new weapons, five new forgeable weapons, five new battle pass weapons, but don't worry if you still want the old battle pass weapons, they will still be available, you can still select them. But apparently, as of this update, if you have been playing since launch and bought every battle pass, you could have every weapon R5. I haven't checked my battle pass weapons in a while, but I should actually be one of those people. <laughs> Two new artifact sets as well, which is not surprising for an entire new area. I would talk about these sets and who they might be good for, but they don't even go into detail there, which is halfway a relief because there's so much information to absorb here already. But yeah, two new artifact sets. I love new gear. I love farming new gear. I hate raising it because it always rolls like trash, but it's there. And finally, the thing I'm probably most excited about, more than Fontaine, more than the new characters, system optimizations. Something I've wanted for such a long time, something that has made procrastinating chest farming very easy for me is getting, I, I don't know if fixed is the right word, but multi-layered map, dude. This is amazing. All those underground areas where you don't really know where you're looking, we we have a multi-layered map in game now. Sure, the interactive map already had something like that already, but without being able to see actually where you are in an underground section, it was just so frustrating and annoying to know where you're going. And this won't just be for Fontaine, this will be for the entire world, all of Tevat. Any underground section will have, you can select the layer and it'll be automatic and it'll be cool. Man, that's actually amazing. I'm actually gonna start chest farming again, because I couldn't deal with it, like Sumeru. It was so bad with Sumeru because there were so many underground areas and caves and it's just like, where actually am I? Um, I'm so happy that they're doing this. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> actually, the thing I'm the happiest about. Pretty much at the end of the special program, almost as a footnote, dude. Okay, there are some very cool other things here as well, like all characters will have special introduction animations when you throw them into your team. That's just a really nice thing, and also the background will change depending on where you are, like the desert area or a water area. It just looks a lot more lively and interactive in a way. It doesn't really change anything with the core gameplay or whatever, but it's really cool. They've also added a genius invocation observe option so you can watch your friends playing TCG against one another, I guess. That is something. And they wrap up the special program talking about the uh, orchestra, the music for Fontaine. Genshin has always had amazing soundtracks. I'll probably have it as background music for this video, but yeah, it's really nice. The orchestra part was only like eight minutes, but it was really enjoyable. So many interesting instruments to see as well. But yeah, I guess I'll pretty much do it for the coverage here of a uh, Genshin Impact special program 4.0. Massive, massive update. Of course, I am looking forward to the new characters in the new area and everything, but that map layer system, <clears throat> that literally changes the game for me. Uh, and I think a lot of other players as well. But yeah, make sure to tell me what you think in the comments down below. Dropping a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks as always for watching. And until next time.